Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we are going to have some fun. You guys, I found a list of what they're calling regal regulations. It's basically um, some of the rules that the royal family tend to stick to in terms of dressing and appearance. And we're going to go through them. We're going to see how Catherine gets it right and Megan gets it oh so wrong. This list is sure to tick some people off. So I'm here for it. Thank you guys for being here. I can't wait to take a look at all this because there's some doozy examples in this one. You guys, thanks so much for being here. Honk, honk, everybody. So I found this list out of Daily Mail and I really wanted to go point by point and take a look. Now, side note, there's going to be exceptions to every rule. There's going to be times where it'll say, you know, you're only supposed to wear pink nail polish and then, you know, Catherine will show up in red nails. It's something she's more recently done. So there's going to be exceptions, but I'm talking in general here. In general, these are things that they are supposed to abide by. It's mostly set by the queen, but it had been a lot of tradition that it sounds like from researching this, it sounds like a lot of tradition would set up, you know, these rules. So let's take a look. Let's have some laughs. Uh, and here we go. From weighted hemlines to strict rules on cleavage. Avoid. Royal women face sartorial minefield and 29-point barrage of regal regulations. Now, side note, the weighted hemlines was interesting. I learned about this when I was putting this together. Do you know what that is? I found out that the queen would have the people hand-making her items or, or tailoring her items add in little weights to the hemline because then if there's a gust of wind, it would keep things perfectly in place. How interesting is that? I didn't know that. I think that I just, I love learning details like that. They have the best designers, jewelry, stylists that money can buy. Then how on earth do you explain a disaster like this? My goodness. But royal women have to negotiate sartorial minefield every time they step out in public. Some are the practical, no-nonsense habits developed over time. Others, merely the result of a monarch's whim. Here are some of the more important royal do's and don'ts, from guidelines on which shade of nail polish are acceptable to strict rules on cleavage. All right, I picked a fun one for out of the gate. You ready for this? Oh, you're ready for this. Here we go. Avoid wrinkly fabrics. Should I give you like 10 minutes to let the laughter subside? I know, I can't stop laughing either. Okay, let's start with a ray of sunshine, shall we? Let's start with Catherine. Polished, pressed, beautiful. Rarely a wrinkle in sight. Now, I don't want to discuss it, but I know we just went through this at Wimbledon. She looked beautiful in that green dress, but there were wrinkles. That's honestly one of the few times I've seen her have a misstep like that. I would say that was the exception and in general, like I said at the beginning of this video, we see her perfectly polished, not wrinkled, very well thought out, very well tailored, fitted, you know, everything looks great on her outfits. Now, let's switch gears on this one. Oh boy, where do we start? I know, I'll start here. I actually have a whole video called Wrinkled where I go over Ooh, the many, 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 many wrinkled looks of Megan. She loves to wear a white shirt, but it's never pressed right. It never hangs right. It's ne it's just never right. Um, and more often than not, even now that she's stepped down from royal life, I mean, whatever that means, uh, she uh, when she's wandering around the parking lot, she's still often wrinkled. Okay, the next one, you ready? Royal women should always have neat hair. The question I have is, I mean, is Megan like screwing with us? Is she trying to break every single one of these? I think so too. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so for here, I pulled some of my favorite styles on Catherine. It's always neat, shiny, polished. It's, I mean, you rarely see her have a misstep in this department either. Beautiful. I'm actually completely jealous. I would love to have hair like this. Unfortunately, I don't. Okay, then we have Megan. My goodness. Um, I mean, were we even trying? Again, I do want to point out a lot of the pictures and examples. No, all of them I'm pulling are from her time with the royal family. I'm not even going into how messy it has stayed since she left. I'm talking about as a working royal, if you can call her that, she just 
continue to get this wrong. Messy. If you don't believe me, I have several videos on this. Go watch it. Messy. Seriously, though, what is going on? I've talked about this. I, I have this theory she was going for like a sexy look, but just missed it and landed in a completely different look. Um, light socket, anybody? I'm not sure. It just, it looks uh, completely unkempt. Okay, senior royals use bright colors to good effect. So this was something else that I had learned. I'd learned it a while ago that that was something that the queen had insisted upon. She encouraged them to wear bright colors so that way when they're in a crowd that they can stand out, that people can instantly recognize them. So again, while pulling pictures of Catherine, you notice she'll wear most colors under the rainbow. She looks beautiful. Uh, in colors and she often is seen wearing very bright colors again to have the desired effect of being able so that way when people are in a crowd they can easily spot her then we have this beige mess right here okay let's talk about this she tries to use this in her Oprah interview to play victim again she's like oh I, d I wasn't allowed to whatever she said like we weren't supposed to wear the same colors as other senior working royals so I often wore beige let me tell you what I think actually happened. Obviously, they told her about the bright colors thing, and since she was determined to be an a-hole at every step of the way, she's like, all right, you want me to wear bright colors? I'll wear beige. You want me to have neat hair? I'll go messy, you know? So I I truly believe this was just all to be contrary. That's, that's honestly what I, to be disruptive. Okay, the next one, it's not appropriate to display cleavage. Obviously, the queen wasn't doing this. I've heard many stories of Catherine when she picks out pieces. She'll have the designer sew in, like, a pa like if a panel's missing around the chest, she'll have extra material added, that sort of thing, to keep things pretty modest. Okay, I did some digging, and I found this that, that's an example of what I'm talking about. Okay, this was 2016, a reception at Kensington Palace. Now, the, the thing on the left is how the dress originally looked. On the right, it's actually illusion panel, so it's nude uh, underneath. So there is no, you know, this dress would be very revealing without it. So it's there's no re reveal at all. But I love this color. Side note, it's one of my favorite shades of blue. She looks gorgeous here. Okay, so Megan goes a different route. She decides, eh, it's fine, I'll show some cleavage. And I will say it's not... It's not in a lot of her looks that you see it, but there were a couple. And so we have this one as well as this one. Don't be distracted by the intense robotic stare. Here you go right here. You can see that there is cleavage on display. This was again on a royal duty that, that she was wearing this. Okay, so here's one that's fascinating to me. This one says you should wear clothing to honor a host country. Now what they mean is usually they will make sure that they're wearing a designer local to the place that they're visiting. Now let me talk about this incident right here. Okay, so I'm starting off with these two. They were gifted these hats in Australia and I'll never be able to say the name right. I apologize, my Australian friends. Is it Akabara? I hope I'm saying that right. The beautiful hats that they were gifted um, while they were visiting Australia, okay. These two a-holes couldn't even be bothered to try them on. They were encouraged. It was very awkward, but they couldn't be bothered. Instead, you have them pulling faces like this. Again, they are in, they are guests in Australia. They are there on royal duty. They couldn't even, couldn't even be bothered to pretend like they like them, right? They couldn't even be bothered. Meanwhile, you have these Ray of Sunshines. Look at this. William and Catherine were on a tour in Canada and were gifted these Stetson hats. I love this picture so much. And it's not that I care about Stetson hat. Just look what good sports they are. I can't imagine they were overly thrilled to have these big old hats on their head, but who cares? You are gifted these things. You put them on. If I'm in England and I'm gifted a, I don't know, one of those big furry hats, those tall ones that the guards wear, I'm putting it on and I'm saying thank you. If Catherine gives me a hat like that, I'm saying thank you. I'm wearing it and I'm smiling big in the pictures. I'm not staring at it like it's, I don't know, nuclear waste or something like Meghan and Harry did. All right, the next one, royals keep their coats on in public. 
There are so many things of Catherine's that I love, but if I could raid her, I don't know, royal coat closet, I would in a heartbeat. I'd start with that one on the far right, that blue one. Gorgeous. All of them are beautiful. I love them all so much. She always looks so beautiful in her coats. But um, yeah, apparently that's a thing. Um, they talk about the, the keeping your hands free so you can interact with the public even if you're holding a bag, you're supposed to hold it, I believe it's your left hand, so that way you can shake hands and wave with your right, that sort of thing. So it's 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 just, I don't know, one of those protocols that they do. So the, they're supposed to keep their coats on. Otherwise, you end up looking like this in photos. And while, I don't know, it's just not something you or I would probably ever think about carrying around a coat, it just, I understand why it's a rule because it, again, it doesn't make sense in the photos. So here we have Megan, just again, not adhering to traditions. Okay, this is another one I didn't know. Clutches only for formal occasions. So from what I could tell from my research, it seems like they match clutches with, not matching color, I just mean like clutches are meant to be worn at a formal occasion where you might wear a hat. Um, and then otherwise it's handbags. You wouldn't wear a clutch like typically in a less former, less formal setting. Here we have Catherine looking, I mean, gorgeous as ever. I've always been a huge fan of that blue dress on the right. Looking gorgeous with her clutches. Again, she's donning a hat. It's a dressier occasion. She's dressed beautifully and then she has her clutch here. Oh boy, where to begin? Okay, so we see a clutch, not a formal occasion. Dreadful outfit, by the way. I love black and white together, but this is just so poorly tailored and not fitting and seems to be wrinkled. So it's just kind of a mess. If you pan down further, the pants don't fit right. They hit almost at the shin. Very odd look, but um, decided to pair a clutch with it. Interesting. And here again, hair in a ponytail, no hat. So not necessarily a formal occasion. Oh, baby boy, this dress is just bad. It's one of her worst and uh, sporting a clutch. Okay, so then the next one is the no brightly colored nail varnish. So again, this is a more often than not thing. Occasionally you will see Catherine with bright colored nails, but more often than not, she sports that baby pink color that most of the royal women wear. I believe it's... Um, Essie, and it's called ballet slippers. That's uh, the one that was favored by Queen Elizabeth. So this is what you'll see in most photos of her, this baby pink or like just almost like a clear varnish, just the idea of being not bright, right? Not distracting. Well, Megan decided to go another way once again. Seeing as she didn't think that she'd have enough attention, you know, going up on stage, crashing this event, the British, um, what was it, fashion designer event, wearing Givenchy, a French label, might I add, and wearing black, which is not, we'll get into that, it's not traditionally done, but um, for this kind of situation, uh, one shoulder and then doing this, <laughs> cradling this bump the entire time, won't let go of it, look at me, Look at me, you know, spotlights on her, just every kind of attention grab she could possibly do, including the black nail polish. This was gone into in depth, and um, I believe they talk about it in Revenge, but I think it was courtiers that they went deeper into it, that at this point she was so just over everything, furious, not listening to the palace advisors at all, and didn't even tell her people that she was going, she only let like one person know of her team that she was going to do this. She didn't tell anybody else um, as she didn't want to be stopped. She just wanted to do what she wanted to do without letting anybody else know. And so I believe all of this was obviously done on purpose, not just for the look at me, which is what she hoped to accomplish. It's more just about, I don't being a spoiled brat. You don't want me to wear you know, a, a weird nail polish color. I'm putting on black nail polish, the uh, nail polish color. You know that kind of thing. Uh, uh, black dresses are for morning. I'm gonna wear one on stage. A uh, British fashion designer. Let me throw on something French. You know, it just every possible thing she could do as a giant fu to I, the palace. I wanted to be sure to include Dum Dum Prince in one of these men. 
should not have facial hair. Now, I will say it happens. I know. But the queen felt like beards were only appropriate in a handful of circumstances and they needed to be very well trimmed, very neat. And it was only meant for things like when men were away with the armed forces. They were expected to be clean shaven when they get home. So here are some of my two favorite pictures of William and Catherine. I just think, I mean, she looks like a goddess in this dress. I've gone on and on about this dress. I love it so much. I mean, just gorgeous perfection, right? All right. So look at William. He's so handsome. I believe this was a velvet um, jacket that he wore. He just looks so handsome. Very clean cut, clean shaven. Here you go. Beautiful picture of the, cu the couple. Very happy. I love getting photos like this. I love when we get to see glimpses behind the scenes like this. And then we have this doofus in Dior. You guys, I can't even. He always looks like this now. Just unkempt, a mess, messy. He did when he was officially a working member of the royal family as well. But since then, he just, he looks awful, right? And I tried to do mostly working photos, but I consider this working because he did go. This is at his dad's coronation. He looks like he slept in the suit. It didn't quite fit right. It didn't look right. He continued to make faces like this and he couldn't even be bothered to clean up his facial hair to look like he put in any effort whatsoever. I just think he looks a mess. And here's the happy couple in their candid photo, right? She's always finding the camera and he always looks like this. Okay, the next one, hats and headpieces for public outings. So the way I'm understanding it, if the occasion is considered formal during the daytime, the women are expected to wear hats. So I pulled some of my favorite hats of Catherine, looking gorgeous. I just, I think that berry color really suits her. And I, like I said before, I'm partial to blue, so I had to pull that one. Look at her hair, look at the style. She looks beautiful, right? Gorgeous. Now let's talk about this. You know where I'm going with this. Okay, first and only royal outing with the queen, right? And it's a big deal, all eyes on her. Now the story behind the scenes, I believe this came from Lady C's book, was that the queen's, I, I don't know, dresser, somebody <clears throat> that was close to the queen, let Megan know that she was expected to wear a hat. Basically the way they did it, they explained, is that the queen's lady would tell Megan's helper, the queen will be wearing a hat, meaning Megan should also be in a hat. It's that kind of situation. Well, Megan threw a fit and decided she knows best, as per usual, did not wear a hat, and uh, Karma did the rest of his job. And we have tons of shots like this, which I can't be, I can't find that funnier. You were told to wear a hat. You think you know better than everybody, even on your first outing. I'm telling you, I even said at the time, I've done videos about this, and I said, I don't care what the queen told me to put on my head, I would do it. I, w I would just do it because it's respect, right? You're there with the queen. You don't know more than the queen. She's been there. If she's telling you to wear a hat, you put on a damn hat. But here we have Megan in photos like these because she can't be bothered. She thinks she knows better and she ends up looking like this. All right, hemline should be modest and practical. Makes sense. All right, so you can see Catherine in a different style, dresses, skirts, all that. Um, I will say when she was younger, the hemlines were a little shorter, but then, I don't know, as she's matured, they've come down. She looks gorgeous. It seems to make sense and be practical for moving around and not having any kind of wardrobe, anything. But then you have Megan. My goodness. Yeah, she just thinks the rules don't apply to her. <laughs> Hemline up? Sure. Top of it pulled down? Why not, right? <laughs> Messy. Why not? So on a royal tour, yeah, no problem. Where's that hemline? Don't want to talk about it. You guys, so much going on here. And I understand that during royal tours, we often see the royals. Sometimes they'll dress down for certain things. You'll see William and Catherine hiking, that sort of thing. So I understand that they may have been dressed down here. I just don't think there's any need whatsoever for the slit up to the, you know, where. Okay, the next one, subtle makeup only. So oftentimes they go for the minimal and understated look. So you have beautiful pictures like this where they have just that glow, right? She has a glow about her, but not heavy. 
you can see a little bit more around her eyes, but you know, her lips are left a little bit more natural looking. Oh boy, where do we begin? Okay, holy bronzer. Um, yeah, she decided to go a different way. And if it was a one-time thing, I'd say, okay, maybe it was because it was an evening event. Of course, you're going to go heavier on makeup, but there's a lot going on here. Dark eyes, heavy bronzer, uh, dark lips, a lot. Nothing takes the cake like this look. My goodness. <laughs> There is a lot going on. I just, oh, I don't know much about makeup, but I always heard if you go heavy on the eyes, you don't go heavy on the lips, or if you do a bold lip, you go lighter on the eyes. Again, Megan did not get that memo and decided to go heavy all over the place, including the bronzer. Here's a closer look at the eye makeup if you wanted to see it. Yep. And how come nobody told her about clear eyelash glue? I'll never understand that. There are several pictures where you can see the white glue. And I just think, okay, so she really did piss off everybody and probably did her own makeup here. Thought she knew best. Okay, the next one, only wear black at funerals or memorial weekends. Now, that seems to be the general rule with the exception of evening wear. I'll overlook that because they've both worn black to evening events. I get it. I'm somebody who loves to wear black, so I get that. But I guess for royals, it tends to be that they save it for mourning. Here we have... Catherine wearing this beautiful black dress. Of course, this was um, for the queen and that infamous walkabout that Meghan and Harry tried to spoil. But then we have Meghan who went a completely different way. You guys, there was more than one wedding. This is a wedding she went to. More than one wedding where she's seen wearing black. Oh, and her bra's hanging out. Nice, huh? Look at the people around her. Look at the people in the background. Colorful outfits. You can clearly see it. This is a wedding. Nope, Megan decided she'd wear black. All right, the next one, shoes should always be neat and tidy. Can you imagine where we're going with this one? So again, beautiful blue dress on Catherine and wearing nude heels. It's important to keep your shoes tidy. Again, you're being photographed from every angle, so there's that. Now let's take a look at what's going on with Meg. Yikes, right? Not good. This is why they encourage you to keep your shoes tidy because otherwise you end up with photographs like this covered in mud. All right, royal ladies should wear tights for formal occasion. Now, for my American friends, when I hear tights, I think those black tights, winter tights, um, but they, they seem to mean the sheer tights as well, AKA pantyhose as we would call them. So here we have Catherine in three occasions wearing the nude slash sheer tights. And we have this, you guys. This is before Megan weaponized her spray tan. Um, yeah, no, just doing her own thing here. Who cares about protocol? I do what I want, right? So we have this here, and I had to include, of course, sweet little baby uh, Princess Charlotte and the infamous row over the tights for Charlotte. Uh, Catherine had... Reminded Megan that that is something that royal women slash girls are expected to do. And Megan didn't give a crap about anybody but herself and was looking for a reason to fight. So we all know how that turned out, right? Well, guys, that was a lot of fun. That was my list of some of the royal protocols that they are mostly expected to adhere to or to follow. And we see lots of instances of Catherine... Um, doing that and Megan not so much. So I thought you would enjoy that. I enjoyed putting that together. I enjoyed researching that and learning just about the behind the scenes stuff about the royal traditions and what they, um, you know, what kind of things they're supposed to adhere to. I find that interesting. Anyway, guys, thank you as always for being here and supporting this show. You don't know how much that means to me. I really do appreciate it. I would highly encourage you to check out the merch. We got um, Drunk Goose Club. You know, I love my Drunk Goose Club. Honk, honk, everybody. Uh, we have Make It Make Sense. Recollections may vary. Or check out Patreon, patreon.com slash Real Housewives Recaps, where we do, you know, bonus deep dives, extra stuff, all kinds of bonus content over there. Check that out. If you're into Sex and the City, I'm recapping that as well. I'm almost done with the whole series. I've done... All the episodes, I'm into season six now. Not much more to go. I'm really enjoying that. So check that out. Uh, when you sign up, you automatically get access to the back catalog too. So you can sign up for like a month or two and just check all that out. It's, it's a lot of fun. 
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here and for supporting. It means the whole world to me. If you want to see more like this, please let me know. I love doing ones like this, especially with the fashion fails. I find it so funny and so interesting. And I appreciate you all so much. I can't wait to read the comments on this one. Let me know the hits, the misses, what did I miss, you know, that sort of thing. And I will look for them in the comments. Take care. Bye-bye.